in the previous videos we played around with the mesh hierarchy, the mesh tree, and you can see the output of build mesh tree dot mumps on the screen. Um, this was the, this is what set up the uh, mesh tree for us. We generated a lot of lines like this, and we um, instantiated them with um, with the text. Uh, now we're going to play with the um, with a larger file of uh, medical abstracts. Um, it's osu.medline. It was used in one of the Trek conferences. Uh, it looks like this. It's in the directory up above. This was the old um, PubMed uh, Medline format. It's changed a bit over the years, but it was relatively structured. And as you can see, uh, there's about, I think, 33,000 abstracts in this file. It's fairly large. Um, it was used for an information retrieval um, conference. Uh, anyway, each one begins with stat-medline. Um, it ends with a empty line. It's a line with nothing on it, just a uh, line feed. Uh, the MHs down here are the mesh headings. Now, they're not exactly the same as the mesh headings I was using because these are older. Uh, since then, the mesh headings have been updated, and they're slightly different. But these were the mesh headings at the time. And this database, by the way, is out of date. Again, the disclaimer, don't use it for clinical diagnosis or treatment. All right, so these are the mesh headings assigned to this abstract, or to the document represented by this abstract. Um, this is the title of the of the document, the binding of acetaldehyde to the active sites of ribonuclease, etc., etc., it's the title of the document. I have removed here reference material. There is additional material not shown here, which is references back to the original uh, journal um, volume and uh, page number and so forth. They were extraneous, not really useful. They were removed. Otherwise, it looks pretty much the same. These all begin in column 7, by the way. The text all begins in column 7. Then we get the abstract. starts with AB in columns 1 and 2. And then we got the abstract of the article, um, and we know what the article's done, is then we get a, an empty line. And then the next one starts. Now, in the medical subject headings, I only care about the first word. I don't care about anything that follows the slash. Uh, those were qualifiers. They're not really um, useful now. Um, I don't know what they would even apply to at the moment, but we're not going to look at them. <coughs> Some of these are not really good mesh headings anymore. Um, but nonetheless, um, this is what an article looked like. All right. And um, uh, how big was that file? Um, um, whoops. I have to go up one. Um, it's a fairly big file, 336 million um, bytes. Um, we're not going to process all of them. All right, the first program is meshindex.mumps, uh, and um, that looks like this. All right, now what it's going to do is, um, first of all, it takes a parameter. There's an extra blank there. Whoops. Um, it, was, it wasn't a blank. It was a tab. All right, doesn't matter. I just was straightening it out so it didn't look jagged. Um, I should have left it alone. Uh, percent sign one is the first uh, parameter passed to one of my programs. Other implementations may use a different scheme. So if if you did pass a parameter, one or more, the first parameter will be percent sign one, percent sign two, percent sign three, and so forth. Percent sign zero is the name of the program. Well, if you don't get a percent sign one, it means a parameter is missing and we halt. All right. Now, this is the open for my version of mumps, um, simple, somewhat like the original version of mumps. We open a unit number, in this case, unit number one. The unit numbers are one, two, three, four. Five is a reserved unit number. Um, it's the console. It's input, output. All the others are either input or output, not both. Um, so I usually use one through four. Um, I can use six through, I think the upper limit on mine is 10. I don't know. Very seldom you have 10 open files or uh, 9 if you don't count the console. But anyway, it opens unit number 1, and it opens the file dot dot, which sends me up one level in the directory. It's actually above me in, as I, in the directory structure as I run this. And I open the file OSU Medline, comma, old. Old means it exists, and it also implies I'm reading it. And if I wrote, had comma new, it means I'm doesn't exist, I'm writing it. And we also have append. Okay, dollar sign test is set by open. If dollar sign test is false, um, we quit because we can't find the file. We switch to unit number one. 
we kill off any previous instance of the global array MH, capital MH. We set a counter. This is going to be a counter as to how many documents we've processed. Uh, we're not going to process all 33,000. It takes a long time. This is a function in my version of mumps. It tells me where I am in the current file. Uh, it's the it, it it corresponds to the C C plus plus function um, um, tell tell O uh, I think it is now. Uh, it tells you the byte offset of where you currently are. Uh, since I've just opened the file, I'm at the beginning. It's zero. I haven't read anything. Every time you read something or move through the file in one way or another, uh, it resets this pointer. A pointer is reset. You can find out what the value of the pointer is with a, in my version of mumps with a Z tell. So it tells me where I am in the file. Now at the moment, I'm at the beginning. All right. So now forever, two blanks, not the two blanks. Switch to unit number one. Well, I was already in unit number one, but I'll need to switch back because the loop below. Read in a line. Quit if dollar sign test is false. <clears throat> if dollar sign test comes back as false, I will quit. Or if x is greater than percent sign one. Notice the use of parentheses uh, for the second expression. Yeah, because mumps is uh, doesn't have precedence. The operators are evaluated left um, to right, except if there are parentheses. So uh, if I didn't have the parentheses, it would be the value of um, it would be not dollar sign test, or with the value of x, and then that would be compared with percent sign one, which is not what we want. We want to quit if dollar sign test is false, and therefore not dollar sign test is true or if x exceeds the value in percent sign one. In other words, we've processed uh, percent sign one uh, number of documents. Okay, so if we don't quit, in other words, we didn't run out of input and we didn't exceed the number of documents uh, that we want to talk about, uh, notice the two blanks after the quit. Quit doesn't take an argument, so you have to have two blanks. We do. We enter the block, and here's the block down here. Um, uh, if, we, if the line we read is an empty line, that means that it's the end of an abstract, um, we will find out where we are. Now, you got to remember, we read the empty line. Where are we in the file? Well, we're about to read the next line, which is stat medline. Each of these starts off with that stat medline in all caps, if you recall. So the pointer, after reading the new line after reading the empty line has actually advanced to the start of the next line so i is going to be the pointer to stat medline in the file um, we increment x and we quit which means we go back up and read another line we quit the, and we return back up here we read another line and we're back to, in the show if we find okay assuming it wasn't an empty line if we come down here, we look at the first um, three characters, and if they are MH blank, I don't know why I did three. Uh, it seemed, it's pretty unambiguous, um, the first two characters. But anyway, it's three characters, MH blank. The first three characters are MH blank. Then I am going to extract from the line. I'm going to extract from the line. The line is A, beginning at position 7, extending out through 255, which means none of them are 255 long. It just means to the end in this case. Okay, so I, first of all, extract the portion of the line that contains the medical subject heading, columns 7 and beyond. Uh, then I'm executing a dollar sign piece on that result, looking for the first part delimited by a forward slash. Now, if there is no forward slash, piece is the entire result, the entire value ca that came back from extract. If there is a forward slash, we just get the part prior to the forward slash. In effect here, what I'm doing is I'm eliminating anything beyond the slash, the slash and beyond, actually. All right, so, um, so we do an extract to pull off the meaningful part of the line, column 7 and beyond. And then we extract the first part. If there's any slash out there, we, we, we forget about anything beyond that. And we only get the first piece, which will be the piece prior to uh, the slash. And then we convert it all to lowercase. Uh, that's a function in mine. It's a Z function. Uh, they're implemented defined. 
and uh, that converts the entire string to lowercase. We, for indexing purposes, we don't care about upper and lowercase. We want everything to be one case. Uppercase would work fine, although it would look weird. Lowercase is what we're using. Okay, so we've got now in A, which was originally the line, but now it's the portion of the line uh, that's got the medical subject heading. Uh, what we want to do is find out if this medical subject heading exists. If the global array MH contains an index with A in it. Now A is one of those topic headings, uh, like myocardium. That's a topic heading. A could be my myocardium. If it exists, what I do is I increment it, all right? which means we've seen one more of them. Uh, we're counting actually the number of times, the number of um, number of number of articles in which um, the, this particular medical subject heading occurs. If it doesn't exist, then we create it and we set the value to one, which means we've seen, say, myocardium in one article so far. Um, if we, if it's again, I'm assuming A is myocardium. Um, if uh, in this case here you know, we will increment we've seen myocardium before at least once um, because dollar sign data on uh, up arrow mh of, of a uh, came back true uh, so we increment it okay so we've got an, uh, we either have a one in there we have some count then we create a second level in this array the second level here indexed at the top level by the medical subject heading for example myocardium the second level is i. Well, i is the values that have been coming back from ZTEL. The first time through, i, of course, is zero um, because we're at the beginning of the file. And subsequent articles, i gets its value from this line up here, from this uh, ZTEL. Uh, so i is telling me where in the file, that 300 and some odd million byte file, the abstract began that contains the medical subject heading myocardium. It's actually a pointer to the stat med line, uh, the very first line of the uh, of the entry. All right, so we've done all that, and we keep churning through until we run out of uh, data to read, dollar sign test fails, or we exceed the count of the number of um, articles we wanted to read. When we're finished with that, we will then come down here, we switch to unit number five, um, uh, we set uh, x equal to empty, and now we're going to go through uh, the MHs. For we're going to order through. Add the first value of x is empty, so the first value that comes back from order will be the lowest alphabetical medical subject heading, and we will churn through this line until we eventually get an empty string back, which means we've seen all of the medical subject headings. Okay. So um, we, get, we get an X, a medical subject heading back. We check to see if it's empty. If it's empty, we quit. We're done. Otherwise, two blanks, um, we do, and we enter this block. And we write out the medical subject heading X, and this looks like myocardium, occurs in, there's the count. The value in there will be the total number of documents it occurs in. Um, and we write space uh, documents. All right. Um, now, this, I didn't fix this. This is my older way of, this is my version of uh, speeding it up. Uh, I have a, a version of the uh, 4 which allows me to uh, just put order in and what it will do, it will give me the subsequent values. It does what this up here does, but it, it, it just does it in a simpler fashion. So the offsets will, it'll cycle through the offsets. And when there's no more offsets, the 4 will quit. It's a not in the standard, but it's a nice thing to have. Uh, but it's effectively the same as this line up here, but only using the second um, the second index. It's shorter as a result. I mean, I think it's cleaner looking personally. But anyway, that's what it is. We could have done the same thing. I could have said uh, in a previous line, uh, set off equal to empty string, and set um, off equal dollar sign order, and then the four would be off equals dollar sign order, just as you see here. Then would be a quit here. It's the same thing. It's just it's just abbreviated. All right. So we go down here. So now we've got an offset. We've got a medical subject heading X, and we've got an offset um, OFF. We switch to unit number one, and then we I do or I invoke a built-in function called dollar sign Z seek, and I pass to it OFF. 
Now that is an implementer defined function because it begins with a Z and what it does is it positions the imaginary pointer into the file at position OFF. So whatever OFF is, and it's a large number usually, um, the file, the imaginary pointer of, the, of where we are in the file is advanced to that place in the file. That place, of course, is the start of an abstract. It's the stat medline that starts an abstract entry. So we've positioned ourselves there. You have to switch to the unit before you do it, because it's going to the Z-seq works on the current unit. Okay, so we've positioned ourselves. Now we're going to do forever. I could actually get an extra blank there. Only two are required. We read in A. What are we reading A from? We're reading it from unit number one. Where are we reading it from? At, well, actually, the very first time we're reading the stat medline of the entry uh, that contains the medical subject heading that we're interested in. Um, and we asked the question, do you have a TI in the first three columns? We're looking for the title. We're looking for the title on this abstract. And so we do an extract on A, which is the line, and I ask if the first three letters are, are, um, are TI blank. Uh, if the answer is no, we don't execute anything else in the line. Okay, so it's an if statement, so we do not execute this stuff here if it's not equal to TI. Instead, we go back in and read another line. Uh, so if it's not TI blank at the beginning of the line, we will back out and read another line. We'll keep reading lines until we find a, a line with TI blank in it. Now, every abstract has a TI blank. If it didn't, I'd, if there was a possibility that one of the lines didn't have a title, or one of the abstract's uh, entries didn't have a title, I'd have to add more code here, but they all do, so I'm not worried about that. So anyway, when we do find a TI, we do. Okay, the do is the block down here. When we come back from the do, notice the two blanks, we quit. Who does the quit apply to? It applies to the four. So that gets us out of this for loop. And we go back up and look at the next medical subject heading on the line a couple of lines up. Okay, when we enter the do, you, you really could put this all in one line, but the line starts getting long. The only reason I have a do there is to make it look a little neater. But these two lines here could be up there in the, um, in the previous line if you wanted to. It might be a little more efficient that way. <clears throat> so I switch to unit number five. I indent um, to position number... Um, uh, to position five, I write out the value of offset, which is my, and, and I also write, and then I skip to position 15, because uh, the offsets vary a little bit in length. Uh, and then I write out um, columns seven through 80 of the line. The, t the, the Some of the titles are quite long, and so I really only want to see, I don't want to see the whole title. Um, so I, the titles begin in column seven. The TI is in column one and two. Uh, the title actually is in column 7 through something. Well, I truncate it 80. If it's shorter than, um, if, if it's less than that, it's okay. If it's longer than that, it's truncated. So I write out the line. All right. Does it work? I hope so. Um, and uh, let's see. We're going to um, mesh index dot mumps. Um, and let's say, uh, I don't know. 3,000 documents. I think I should run it into more. Um, uh, run it to more. Um, so it's going to um, try that. I don't know if the output's going to look like that. It takes a while because after the first part of it, it processes the files. Okay, it's finished processing the first. What was it? 3,000 documents. And here we're getting it. Um, abdomen is one of the subject is one of the subject headings. Mesh headings. It occurs in 11 documents. Uh, these are the offsets of those 11 documents. Those are the offsets into the file, which is only of you know, intellectual interest. doesn't really tell me anything. Uh, well, it tells me where it is, but doesn't mean anything to me. Um, the, the program, of course, used it in order to get out there. So the first one is indium-111, uh, leukocyte scanning of the abdomen. Analysis of the value. You see there it's truncated. The title is chopped at... Uh, actually 73 characters, uh, 7 through 80, so I guess that's 73. Um, <clears throat> anyway, you can see um, abdomen acute, abdom abdominal injuries, um, 
abdominal neoplasms, and so forth and so on. So um, spacing on, you can see it's um, adenocarcinoma apparently was a really popular one. Uh, I, I, hitting enter uh, space uh, advances one line, hitting space bar advances to page. So adenocarcinoma was in there 30 times. So, um, wow, what was, that, what was that one? Um, this one's got a lot. Adolescence, well, 351 documents. Um, yeah, adolescence is a, probably a per fairly common term. Anyway, without worrying about it. Um, those are the documents indexed by basic mesh headings, the mesh headings that were contained in the original documents. All right, I'll call it quits for this one.